Jackson. All right, great, 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 great. For those of you all who are with us, Facebook Live, we've been doing this every week so that uh, we can learn through repetition. And so as we hear the same scriptures week in and week out, we will be able to recite them or uh, at least be able to know where they're found. And so this is helping everyone out. Um, what we're going to do tonight's lesson in our, um, in our books, I do not choose our lessons. We go according to the, um, the Bible study books that we receive from the Church of God in Christ. And so um, uh, tonight's lesson, lesson seven, is God's holy people and evangelism. God's holy people and evangelism. And um, we're going to jump right in. Uh, I will refer to our background reading and our devotional reading, but what we want to do is we're going to jump right in. Uh, first of all, let me start by just um, just giving you a formal definition of evangelism. Evangelism is simply the spreading of the gospel of Jesus Christ by public preaching or personal witness. All right. The spreading of the gospel of Jesus Christ by public preaching or personal witness. That's what we're talking about. Um, uh, evangelism, God's holy people and evangelism. And as we, um, I'm, I'm going to just say something. I've said it before um, at First Church. When there's a reason why God, God doesn't just save you and call you home. All right. There's a reason like you, you get saved and, and you're here, but you're not just here waiting on the rapture. All right. There's a purpose why that you have a purpose. You're not just saved to be saved. There is a purpose. There is work for you to do. The um, the harvest is is uh, yes, the harvest is plentiful. Right. But what? The laborers are few. All right. So as believers, when we when 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 you get saved, all right, our job our job is to go into the 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 field and work. We become laborers, okay? And um uh the the number one thing that God wants us to do is to evangelize, to witness, all right? Um, so what we're gonna do is we're going to jump in and we're gonna talk about God's holy people and evangelism. And again, evangelism, the spreading of the gospel of Jesus Christ by public preaching or personal witness. So we're going to jump right into our lesson and uh, we're gonna jump right down to introduction and First Lady is going to begin reading. You all know how I do. I sometimes take a sentence at a time. So she'll read the first sentence. The first believers were examples of faith, commitment, boldness, and understanding of their commission. All right. When we're talking about the first believers here, they're talking about the, uh, the apostles. All right. They're, they're talking about uh, uh, mainly the 11 of the disciples that remain because Judas committed suicide. And they're talking about uh, the apostle Paul who was commissioned by God, all right, uh, on the road to Damascus. So when we're talking about um, the first believers, that, that's basically who we're talking about here. It says they were examples of faith, all right? When we're talking about faith, it means that they believed wholeheartedly in the God that they served, all right? They, listen, you, you have to understand that when Jesus rose from the grave, all right? When he rose from the grave, he could have ascended back to his father, all right? And he would still have been risen from the grave, right? But it was important that he showed himself to the disciples, it was imperative because listen, when you win, it's a difference between hearing something and witnessing something, knowing that you know that you know. 
So regardless what anybody told them, um, you know, contrary to Christ being risen from the dead, they knew he was alive because he met with them on more than one occasion. He sat down, he ate with them. All right. And so they knew these disciples, they knew that they were serving of God that raised Jesus from the dead. They saw all the miracles that had done. And so they were, they, they were, they were, um, uh, their, their faith couldn't be shaken. All right. Their faith could not be shaken. And after you've walked with the Lord and after you've seen what he has done for you and in the lives of others, our faith shouldn't be shaken. Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. Amen. All right. So they were examples of faith, mm -hmm. examples of commitment. Now, there's a lot of um, synonyms for um, commitment. I pulled it up. There's just a few it says dedication, devotion, allegiance, loyalty, responsibility, obligation, duty, liability. But the one that stood out to me that I like the most is the word tie, T-I-E. When you are committed to something, you're tied to it, all right? You're, you're, you're tied to it. And um, I thought about uh, my son's, well, immediately I thought about my son's basketball, um, the, the AAU, right? And I thought about <clears throat> our commitment to it, all right? Even more so my wife than I, because she has to go to more games because of my schedule. But the thing about it is when you're committed to something, you don't allow just anything, all right, to um, hinder you from your commitment, all right? Listen, rain, shine, COVID, um, uh, whatever, you, you, you know what I'm saying? The, the phone ring, nope, got to go, or I'll talk to you on the way, I got a basketball game. Uh, this come up, that come up, nope, I have a basketball game, can't make that. Uh, sometimes I had to go out of state for basketball, had to, had to do back-to-backs, all right? Two games in, in, in the span of three hours or whatever, right? And, and you're, you're, you're committed. You, you don't, oh, I don't feel like going, but I got to go because I'm committed, all right? Oh, I don't feel like driving all the way down. Got to go because I'm committed. And so when you're committed, all right, when you're committed, you're, you, that, that dedication, you, you, you just don't allow anything, any little thing, come what may, to keep you from your, uh, from your commitment, from your responsibility. That's how we have to be in our service to the Lord. We have to be committed. We have to understand that it's not your dedication to your pastor. It's not your dedication to the church, it's your dedication or your commitment to God and ministry. That's what it is. You have to understand, I'm not doing this so my name can be called. I'm just committed to the work of the Lord. Amen. 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 And so you don't let every little thing just interfere, all right, with your commitment. Amen. Um, we have boldness. They were examples of boldness, all right? First thing that came to mind was the fourth chapter of Acts. After Peter and John had just, uh, through the power of the Holy Ghost, um, uh, uh, healed the man who sat at the gate, who was begging, uh, um, and strength came back in uh, his legs. Well, uh, they had to stand before the Sanhedrin. Now, the Sanhedrin was, you know, the 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 supreme court of, of judaism all right they they were all of the the, the pharisees the, you know the top you couldn't go any higher than the sanhedrin and what you have to understand is that christianity was 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 not popular it, it, you were rebels you were uh heretics all right when, when you went up against and taught anything contrary to Judaism, contrary to the law, accepting uh, this Jesus of Nazareth as the son of God, as, as all it no, you, you couldn't do that. And so when they questioned Peter and John about by what authority did you know did you do this? And now it they, they, they go. They went talking about Jesus and 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 begin to talk about, I mean, they started from way back and just brought it on up to 
to you know their present time on just how who Jesus was and how he fulfilled the scriptures. What what they what you have to understand was is that their lives was on the line. They could have been you understand at that point for for what they were teaching they could have been put to death. They could have been beaten at that at that point. Uh, a lot of things could have happened to them, but their boldness allowed them to um, continue to preach uh, the gospel, even though, and when you read in the fourth chapter, the Sanhedrin told them, said, you got you, you got to be silent. You can't teach this anymore. And they said to the Sanhedrin, who do you think we're going to listen to? Uh, God, or are we going to listen to you? All right, so they were very bold. As a matter of fact, 2 Timothy 1 and 7, God has not given us the spirit of fear. That word fear means timid. He did not give us a timid spirit. All right, we ought to, ought to be bold in our walk. We ought to be bold in our witness. Uh, uh, when we're talking to people, you have to have, years ago, you heard the term holy boldness. Mm -hmm. I don't hear that anymore. All right. They used to use that term, God, that holy boldness. All right. And, and because we are not supposed to be afraid. All right. To open our mouths and speak up on behalf of Jesus Christ. I remember years ago, when they had the shooting in Columbine, Colorado, I believe it was. And they said, one of the witnesses said a gunman went up to a little girl and, 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 and said, if you say Jesus one more time or something, I'll blow your brains out. Or maybe he asked her something like that. And she said Jesus or she acknowledged that she believed in Jesus and he shot her. All right. But you, listen, <laughs> for God I live, and for God, I die. All right. Now we say that. That's what we say. But listen, <laughs> it, there may come a time uh, where, you know, because that's going on in other countries. There are other countries right now. All right. That will take your life if they find out you're a Christian. They'll take your life if they find out you're teaching Christianity. That's not here yet. All right. But there may come a time, all right, where your uh, where you may uh, have your life put on the line or your freedom put on the line for spreading this gospel, and then and then what 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 are you going to do then? So they were examples of faith, commitment, commitment, boldness, and understanding of their commission. They understood their commission. They understood that Christ needed them to spread this gospel, all right? They were going to uh, uh, be the one, they were chosen by God, by Jesus Christ, to evangelize what? The known world, or the, those 11 apostles and Paul, that was their job, all right? So they understood their commission. They said, you know what? Hmm. We couldn't see all of this when we first began to follow him. All right. When he told us to drop our nets and follow him, we didn't see all of this. But after three and a half years of, of walking with him, seeing the miracles, hearing him teach, and now we understand fully who he is. All right. Uh, now we understand our, um, our commission. And, and, and as believers, um, you get saved, and then what? You learn. You have to get into a Bible study. You have to get into Sunday school. You have to go to a, a, a seminary if you can, because you need to understand that with your, um, uh, uh, with your conversion, mm -hmm. all right, comes responsibility. All right, with your conversion comes responsibility. And what is the responsibility? Your responsibility is evangelism, the spreading of the gospel of Jesus Christ by public preaching or personal witness. Now we're gonna get into that a little more, but we're, we, we have a, a personal responsibility as believers 
to tell somebody about Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Um, now, First Lady, mm -hmm. please continue reading. Any questions or comments, you all know how we do. Unmute, get my attention, and feel free to, uh, to add uh, to the lesson. Thank you. Come on, First Lady. They knew the commission to evangelize could mean hardship, even death for them. But they were willing to take the risk because they understood God's part in the task. All right, you can stop right there. Hardness. Uh, what did it say? Yeah, they knew the commission to evangelize could mean hardship. Second Timothy 2 and 3. Um, endure hardness as a good soldier. All right? Endure hardness as a good soldier. Soldiers um, uh, in combat endure hardness. Uh, it, it just, just look at those who fought in, uh, say, Korea, Vietnam, uh, the conditions that they had to fight in, all right? Um, uh, the weather, hot, uh, uh, rainy, all right? Not just hot, that tropical or a tropical um, uh, weather. Uh, rainy, when you're in the rain. I've been in that rain when I was over in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. And and they have rainy season where it, it just rains. And ra it rains so much, you don't even know it's raining no more. It, it's just raining. It be just becomes a part of, of the day. It, your socks are wet. Your, 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 your shoes are wet. You're wet. All right. Are you, mosquitoes are out there. And, and God knows what else is, is out there. Um, and... and, and um, you don't have the comforts of home. Uh, you have you, you're away from loved ones. Um, you have to uh, while you're in uh, bearing all of these conditions, uh, you yet have to stay vigilant because you have to keep, uh, uh, look out for the enemy. Your your life is always in danger. Uh, it's just so many things that a soldier in combat has to deal with. Uh, but they knew this, all right. They knew that it what they had to deal with um with hardness many of them uh were put in prison they were beaten beaten etc cetera, etc cetera. also it says even death okay um in acts 1 and 8 where it says and ye shall be witnesses unto me all right that word witness in the greek is martus all right which which means um to be an eye or an ear witness, literally uh, and judicially, as if you're sitting in a courtroom uh, on the stand, all right, literally you shall be a, a witness, okay? You're going to give your what? Testimony, what you seen, what you heard. But guess what? That word martus doesn't just mean that. It also, um, it also means martyr. And so what Jesus was saying is not, you're not going to just be witnesses for me, but you're going to be martyrs for me, which they were. Amen. When you, when you read, they, they became martyrs for Christ. It takes commitment to be told that you're going to be a martyr and you continue with the task. Amen, somebody. That's, that's exactly right. That's right. Listen, when you go for a job and you sit down with somebody and you want to know what your job entails, is that is that right? Okay. What, what am I at first? What what are the no, not what are the hours? What are the what is the pay? All right. That's the first thing. What is the pay? All right. What what's my hours? All right. And then, you know, what do I have to do? Well, you'll have to, you know, and then you you decide when you hear all of that, you know, well, well, you know what, it is not for me, or whatever the case might be. But listen, they were told up front, all right, what they would have to deal with. And what? Because of their commitment, all right? Uh, uh, be, because uh, of their just love for Christ and for God, they were willing to die for him. Amen. 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 Now, check yourself. Do your own inventory. Say, man, am, am I willing to die? Amen. It, it, am I willing to put my life on the line for the sake of Christ? Amen. That's what you call self-evaluation. 
Amen. When they put, when somebody put that gun to your head, all right? Yeah, you a believer? You know, I'm, I'm, I'm Islam. Jesus. No, I'm, uh, I'm atheist. I'm, 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 I'm. What are you gonna say when somebody say, okay, you gonna preach this gospel? All right. Well, you going to prison. What are you gonna do? No, I'm going to prison and I'm going to preach it while I'm in prison. Jesus. Oh. All right. So First Lady read, they knew the commission to evangelize could mean hardship, even death for them, but they were willing to take the risk because what? They understood God's part in the task. They understood God's part in the task. Now, when I read that, I thought about myself. All right. I thought about myself because I am, I'm not pastoring because I want to. All right, I'm, I'm not here because it's my heart's desire. All right, I didn't grow up wanting to, you, you know, practicing being the pastor and the superintendent and, and all of that. You, you know, no, if, 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 you just, if, if you just take the spiritual out of it and let's just deal with what the, what the flesh want, what Mark and Cheryl want. All right, this is not what we want. We, out, you know, we want to get out of Jersey and we don't, I mean, we'd be in ministry involved in ministry some kind of way, but this isn't what we chose. And so I know, all right, the reason why I'm here is because one, what did it say? I understood God's part in the task. And the longer I'm here, the more I can see God's hand in it. I can see the manifestation. You can see the fruit all right, and you just know that I'm, I'm operating in the will of God, okay? And when you know that you're operating, it, it didn't, didn't, who was that? The Clark sisters, wasn't that a song? The safest place in the whole wide world yeah, is, is in the will of God. Will of God. That it's safest place is in the will of God because God will not let anybody keep his will from being done. All right. And so anybody that comes up against his will, all right, God, God will handle it. God will handle it. Amen. And so that's how I look at it. Say everything I need, God going to provide it. Everything I'm supposed to have, God, gonna, you, you know, it, you, I just go down. And so when you know, when you know God is in this, it, it, that gives you um, peace of mind. All right, it gives you peace of mind knowing that God has his part in the task. Continue reading, First Lady. Anybody want to comment? No comments yet? Because you all know I don't like to talk for an hour. All right? No? Okay, come on, First Lady. All right. They knew God committed, committed his, his commission that he had given the believers. Through his love, he saves the believer through the finished work of Jesus Christ. And then he blesses and prospers them as they take on the character of Jesus Christ and go forth and, and effect changes in the lives of others as they disciple them. All right, stop right there. Let's back up. They knew God commit, they knew God committed his um, believer through the what? What's the next word, first lady? The finished, finished work. The finished work of Jesus Christ. We have to talk about the finished work of Jesus Christ. Brother Mike, I gave you uh, those three scriptures. I'm going to call them in, in order. John 19, 28 to 30, 1 Corinthians 3 and 11, and then Romans 5, 8 through 11. So we're going to go to John 19, 28 to 30 first. John 19, 28 to 30. We're talking about the finished work of Christ. What are we talking about finished? All right. Uh, go ahead, First Lady. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, saith, I thirst. Uh -huh. Now there was a set, there was set a vessel full of vinegar, and they filled a sponge with vinegar and put it upon hyssop and put it to his mouth. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. All right. All things were accomplished. Then down in verse 30, 
he said what? It is finished. What is he talking about? He's talking about the redemptive work of Christ to, to bring man back into fellowship, right? Fellowship with God. All right. And um, the, the, um, he, he fulfilled the need for a, uh, a perfect sacrifice. Okay. And so that when he said it is finished, it, 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 that's what he was talking about. All right. The redemptive plan of, of Christ to, to uh, redeem man back to God. Uh, that's what he was talking about. Um, so we go to still talking about it is finished. We talk about first Corinthians three and 11 first lady for for other foundation can no man lay than that is laid which is jesus christ jesus christ is the foundation all right he laid it when he was here or he laid the found yes that's what it said right mm -hmm. like he laid the foundation he opened up the way oh, yes. right there's other folks that's trying to build on other things but you can't bit you listen there, there's no other foundation uh other than jesus christ if you build on any other foundation the building gonna lean the building gonna sink. sink all right it's gonna blow something's gonna happen all right but on christ the solid rock i stand jesus is the firm foundation oh, yes. amen he is what the church okay, is glory. built on Jesus. the church can't be built on anything else amen, amen. but uh uh jesus christ and, yes. and what he accomplished okay and then romans 5 8 through 11. but god commended his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners Christ died for us. Mm -hmm. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Wait a minute, but being, being justified just as I had never sinned. We are justified how? By his blood, blood. right? And it says we shall be saved from the wrath how? Through him. Through mm -hmm. him. Uh -huh. He's the only one that can save us. We'll say by no other name can 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 you be saved but by the name of Jesus Christ. Verse 10, verse lady. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being re reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Uh-huh. We can't we it, we can't be saved by his life if he's dead. Uh -huh. we're, we're saved by his life. Go ahead. And not only so. But we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Oh, we we amen. amen. He amen. be he the, the you, atonement. Jesus. All right. Oh, he atoned for our sins through his blood sacrifice amen. on Calvary. Yes. Amen. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Jesus. Uh, he, he he paved the way. Yes. Amen. He he became uh um uh, uh uh the bridge. Uh he became the arbitrator. Um he he the middleman uh, uh out the propitiation for our sins. Yes, sir. Uh, uh uh that's that's it. So when you talking about it is finished, Christ did it all. Ah, Amen. Christ yes. did it all. Amen. amen. And so that's why the, the things I just said, amen, is um is what we um talk about when we evangelize and when we witness. Yes. Okay, it's all about Jesus. Yes. Even yes. listen, even when when he he told the disciples. He's sending them another comforter. Mm -hmm. He told them, and he will testify mm -hmm. of me. Yes. The Holy Ghost wasn't even going to talk about himself. The Holy Ghost is going to tell us about Jesus, yes. our Savior. Mm -hmm. mm. That's it. It would say, no man can say that Jesus is the Christ, but by the Holy Ghost. Woo, God. Yes. Who knows him better but the one who shares eternity with him? Right. right. Oh my God. Right. Been knowing him a long time. Holy yeah. Ghost say, Yeah, we go way back. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah that's right. In the beginning, God. Yes. That's exactly right. Uh-huh. 
Uh -huh. Amen. So glad. Yes. Um, all right. Any comments? Any any anything anybody want to add? Uh just chime in. You all know how we do. Come on for wait, wait. First lady also read uh the finished work of Jesus Christ. And then he blesses and prospers them as they take on the character of Jesus Christ and go forth and affect changes in the lives of others. We're in uh, this pandemic season, right? Um, it became uh, evident early in the year. Matter of fact, there were people who had it November, December, but they didn't, they were being diagnosed with pneumonia and other things, mm -hmm. uh, but it was here and it, it, it's been spreading. And um, what, what, what's, what's happening, what they set up is uh, in many places, many places um, they set up a system of people called contact tracers, mm -hmm. all right? And so if, 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 if one of you with first lady gets a uh, test positive, all right, so let's say she gets sick, she has a headache, she goes to the hospital and they, they test her because she has a high fever and what else, they find out she tested positive. Mm -hmm. The contact tracer will then begin to ask her questions. Um, well, where were you in the past few days? All right, well, I went to church or I went to my son's basketball game, or I ate at uh, Ruby Tuesday's uh, indoor dining, okay? Mm -hmm. And the reason why they do that is because they go back to these places, mm -hmm. all right? And, and when they do their research, all right, they can find out that there was somebody there, all right? When they do their research and they say, okay, well, it wasn't Ruby Tuesdays. It was, okay, it was at, it was at the church, all right? You, you, somebody at the church was positive and infected you, mm -hmm. right? And that's how the contact tracing works. They're able to trace it back to um, a person. Now, how many of you all know, I'm gonna ask you this question spiritually, who have you infected? Mm -hmm. If 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 they, if if God had contact tracers, mm -hmm. right? I mean, can they trace their salvation back mm -hmm. to you witnessing Jesus. to somebody? You follow what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You're gonna say, okay, you saved. Well, how'd you get saved? And somebody's gonna say, well, I heard the word of God and, and such and such. Can 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 somebody trace, Amen, their their, their invitation to Christ? back to you amen okay. that that that's that's the question amen and so uh it it, it says what uh take over the character of jesus christ and go forth and do what i, I know it says affect all right affect change but I, it's a play on words i said in fact all right it's just a play on word we have to affect change in people's lives mm -hmm. and listen that you and it can be it, it can happen multiple ways you don't always have to open your mouth to witness uh to somebody your life all right is an open book some people somebody might want to come to christ just because they watched you just because they watch how you carried yourself or how you handled a certain situation. Maybe they just listen to you talk about your church. All right. Now I'm thinking about Mother Sanders. All right. Everybody talk, everybody talk about how Mother Sanders love her church. No matter where she go, what what hospital, what rehabilitation center, everybody they always talk about. Um, yeah, Mother Sanders, she was in here talking about her church and talking about her pastor, right? And so right. some people, some people, brother Mike, there's my witness. He said, amen. <laughs> See, there's, there, there's some people who just might want what you want because of your enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. hey, so amen. Because of, have, have you ever eaten something? And you're like, oh my God, mm -hmm. you're making all kinds of noises because it tastes so good. You look at your fingers 
the sooner that somebody like, well, what's that? Oh, well, this is such and such and such, and I got this from, you know, and, oh, okay, well, you know what? Next time I go, I think I'm going to try one. And what do you say? Yeah, go ahead, because, oh, my God, and, 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 and you just make it all kind of, see, and, and that's how it is. Sometimes a person just, just, it, they go by your behavior, your reactions, okay? And so we ought to affect change in people's lives. Amen. Pastor, that actually happened to me in jury duty. Okay. I didn't even know that, you know how you go to jury duty Monday, to, well, years ago, you went Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and I think Thursday would usually be your last day. Well, that last day, a young woman came up to me, said she had been watching me all week long and wanted to know what it was about me that was different. So like you said, it might not be anything that you say. They're watching you. They're watching how you carry yourself in different situations. I, I'm Mother Davis, I thought about Sister Jeter. Sister Jeter got her entire Jersey City crew because there's something about. First, that's right. It's a difference. That's right. And even her own, even her own daughter testified. She 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 um um saw a difference. Uh, mm -hmm. Sister T. Andrew. Right. She said I she said I saw I saw a difference in my mother's life. Mm -hmm. This that and the other, such and such and such, and, and 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 she even became curious of what was going on over there at three eighty three Yale Avenue. And Amen. Was so much so <laughs> right. That that she, she you know she the would grandma. sneak in the door and sit on the back row, but she was in. The <laughs> you follow what I'm saying? Yes, yeah, yeah, nothing wrong with a little curiosity. You know, hey, I want to, I, I want to know what it is about this because what I see a change. Mm -hmm. Pastor, some water, some plant, but God gives the increase. That's, That's right. right. That's right. That's exactly That's right. right. So, and you know what? Infect somebody. You don't know. That's right. If you're right. sowing or watering, mm -hmm. you, you you don't know. Mm -hmm. That's right. Amen. But what God gives the increase. Mm -hmm. That's why Paul was like, nah, some of y'all saying I am of Paul and I am of Apollos and this day. He was like, nah, it ain't about that. It, it's, all, it ain't, it's, it's all about Jesus Christ. All right. That's who it's all about. Um. Come on, First Lady. Any other comments? We're going to finish up that bottom paragraph mm -hmm. where it says Jesus told them. As believers. Where at? Okay, go ahead. As believers, they had gone into a partnership with God. Again, they are, are the, the, the apostles. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Jesus told them to go to Jerusalem and wait for the infilling of, the, of his Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. When they received his Holy Spirit, they would receive power from on high. All right. They received the Holy Spirit. Now, what you have to understand is uh, they had already received the Great Commission. All right. Matthew 28, 18 through 20. Brother Mike has that. That's part of our uh, background reading. He's going to put that up on the screen. Matthew 28, 18 through 20. This is called the Great Commission. First Lady. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Mm -hmm. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. How should, how, how should they baptize? In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Oh, and, and who told them to baptize like that? Uh-huh, Jesus. Told them to baptize how? Go in the name of the Father, in the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Okay, okay, go ahead. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. This, Amen. It, he said, teaching them to observe all things, what? Whatsoever I commanded you. All right. In other words, when when you're going out, you're not going out delivering your own message. All right. You're going to you're going to you're going to say what I commanded you to say. OK, so this was the Great Commission. All right. To the 11. OK. Um, now. He had commissioned them, but after that. He, he didn't send them out right away, but he said, go and do what? Wait in Jerusalem mm -hmm. 
until you be endued with power from on high. Now, when you're talking about the Holy Spirit, all right, I want y'all to understand something because we read about uh, um, uh, what the disciples did, what the, you know, the disciples did, what Paul did in the book of Acts. But what you need to understand is that the book of Acts, the complete title of the book of Acts is the Acts of the Apostles by the Holy Ghost, all right? What they did, they were able to do it by the power of the Holy Ghost. It's the Acts of the Apostles, okay? They didn't do it on their own. They did it by the power of the Holy Ghost, all right? This Holy Ghost that was going to tell them um, uh, all about Jesus Christ, okay? Um, I have something else underlined. All right. I think it's in the next paragraph. If it's not, I'm going to go back to this. Okay. But anyway, um, uh, they needed the Holy Spirit. Okay. They received the power from on high on the day of Pentecost. All right. 120 were in the upper room. All right, and they received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Where at? In in the house, mm -hmm. right? They were in the upper room in the house. They received what? The baptism of the Holy Ghost. But when they received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, where did they go? They went outside. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. All right, the, the 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 Holy Ghost that you received in the house. Is, is meant to be used outside. Okay. Outside. You follow what I'm saying? Yes, see, oh, yeah, see, <laughs> the, the, the Holy Ghost is not going to just use you in church. All right. All right. All right. God, yeah, right see, there. when you're talking about witnessing and evangelizing, <laughs> see, they got it in the upper room and then what? He used them outside. Outside. That's Everybody right. in the house already had the Holy Ghost. Uh oh. Well, he, 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 he sent them outside uh -huh. to witness yes. and evangelize. Well, we out, Pastor. We're not, in, <laughs> we not right. in the building no more. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that, that's, that's exactly right. So what? You should be using the power of the Holy Spirit yes. to witness, to evangelize, to win souls to Christ. On the day of Pentecost, uh, uh, Peter preached. How many souls were saved? 3,000. 3,000. 3, 3, that mm. was an altar call, wasn't it? Yes, Three sir. on the day of yes, Pentecost. Sir. Yes. All right. And so, yes, and, and you get what, let God fill you up and, and give you everything you the need in the right. house. Mm -hmm. All right. But then go outside. Mm -hmm. Amen. And use it outside. Amen. 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 Well, that's what they did on the day of Pentecost. Well, Amen. <laughs> um, come on, first lady, let's jump into this. Uh, do I want one, Mary? Yes. Okay. Let's go to this next paragraph. Every believer must know that it is the will of God for him to go to the hedges and highways and recruit men and women to become followers of Christ. Mm -hmm. When the believer goes out to evangelize, they must know that, that, that they are going to encounter some real spiritual warfare. Uh -huh. The devil does not want the believer to evangelize because he wants to all to be lost. When Jesus approached the man with demons, the demons said, leave us alone. They did not want to come out but they had to obey the voice of Jesus. All right, I just want to make things clear. All right, I want to make things clear. We know what I gave you the definition of evangelism, mm -hmm. uh, the spreading of the gospel of Jesus Christ by what? Public preaching or personal witness. When you are, um, uh, not even, I was gonna say a new convert. No, when if, if, if you're saved and you are a part of an organization, a church, you have a pastor, all right? 
uh, do not take it upon yourself to go out preaching. Mm. So All right. Do not take it upon yourself to go out preaching. Now that's the zeal in you mm -hmm. that wants to go out and 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 preach because that word we're talking about evangelism on tonight. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, um, what 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 you do? All right is. Uh, you you can witness you have a, 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 a green light to witness because you, in your in your witnessing what you are doing is you are you are talking about what Christ did for you mm -hmm. all right you're talking about what Christ did for you you know that that that's personal you you, you follow what I'm saying um uh the the disciples you have to understand this is that before the disciples all right uh, and, and they were later called the apostles because they were sent. And that's what the word uh, apostle just means. They were sent, all right? The 11 were commissioned by Christ. And so was Paul on the road to Damascus. He was sent by Christ himself. And so you can't make yourself an apostle. You, you, you got to be, you know, somebody lay hands on you and send you. You, you. you follow what I'm saying? Don't send yourself. Let, 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 let somebody send you. And so... Um, uh, the disciples, let me back up with the disciples were what they were trained for three and a half years under Christ. I'm going to, I'm going to repeat that before they went out on their own. All right. They were trained. They sat at the feet of Christ and they learned something. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, uh, he taught them. They, they, they were able to glean, they were able to learn right at the feet of Christ for three and a half years. Then after they were taught, and he taught them all that he could teach them in three and a half years, then he commissioned them, all right? But then they didn't go anywhere until they were filled with the Holy Ghost, okay? Okay. Then after they were filled with the Holy Ghost, they were what? They were led, all right? You have to be led by God. You have to, and, and, and that's where uh, the, the Holy Spirit uh, is there. The, listen, the, the Holy Spirit is, is, is an asset that we ought to rely on, okay? Because, because we don't know everything like God. And so therefore what the Holy Ghost does is directs us uh, to where we ought to be. I, I brought up the example not long ago where Apostle Paul filled with, who was filled with the Holy Ghost, he desired to go preach, I believe it was in Asia or Asia Minor. But the Bible says, but the Holy Ghost forbade him to go and say you were, he was needed in Macedonia. And, and that's where, and y'all know the story, at, uh, at 16, they end up getting thrown in prison and, and at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and, and, you know, at the end of Philippian jail, or what must I do to be saved? See, the Holy Ghost led him to uh, 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 to Philippi to be what thrown in prison and everything had to be played out. Why? Because there was a soul there. Amen. God needed that Philippian jailer. Amen. To, uh, uh, he he got saved. He and his family. And so we have to make sure we're led by God. You need the Holy Ghost. You got to be able to hear um, uh, uh, through through a dream. All right. Uh, Peter was led to go to Cornelius's house to, to preach the gospel to who? To Gentiles. And when he got there, being led by the Holy Ghost, he preached the gospel and those that were in the house was saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. So you have to be led by God because zeal can mess you up. Zeal can, zeal, you, you know, zeal, when... When you're zealous, you just want to do everything. You can conquer the world when you got a lot of zeal. You, you, you listen. You want to walk from California to New York 
and just preach to God. You're going to quit your job. I'm going full-time ministry. I just got all this zeal. Everybody needs to know about the Lord. No, you got to slow down and you got to listen to the Holy Ghost. All right. And you got to you got to be led by God. And, and one, you shouldn't have plans to go anywhere until you sat under somebody and learned something. Amen. Um, then it says what? Th then, and they were led. And then what? They spread the gospel to the known world. All right. And guess what? They did it without a Bible. Hmm. God, yeah, think about that. The gospel was spread across the world, right, without a Bible. Mm -hmm. Well, how is that possible? Because when you have the Holy Ghost, Personal witness. right, he will word your mouth mm -hmm. and tell you everything that you need to say to those whom you're speaking to. That's why it says, uh, 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 open up your mouth and and uh, what's that rough and say? Jesus said, if you go, I'll go with you. Boy. Open up your mouth and speak I'll speak for you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Ab evangelize the whole world without, without telling anybody to turn to a scripture. Amen. They just, God used uh, what they knew, mm -hmm. what they were taught, what was in them. He used, and let me tell you, there's nothing more powerful than a personal testimony. Oh my God! Huh? You, now, you, yes, sir, brother Mike. Is that is is would that be the reason um, why you get the you get the gift of tongues? Is because of the Holy Spirit? You be able to speak as God wills you to speak in any kind of language that you need to speak in. That's exactly right because there are there are other tongues and unknown tongues, okay. right? But you, listen, God can have you somewhat speak to somebody who, who don't know a bit of English. You don't know a bit of Swahili. You don't know, a, a, you understand, but through the power of the Holy Ghost, all right? Because that's what he did on the day of Pentecost. What did he say, what, what happened? Um, on the day of Pentecost, when they were speaking in 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 uh, other tongues, okay, because guess what? On the day of Pentecost, people came from all over the world. All right, they were there. They were celebrating because you, you you had Jews all over. Then you had then you had people that came uh, for this celebration. They were they were uh, vendors. I mean, the plate Jerusalem was packed. Okay, with people who spoke other languages, and they and when when God filled them with the Holy Ghost and they went outside, what happened was they were like, Why do we hear these Galileans speaking in our language? All right, they were talking about Christ, they were witnessing about Christ in those other languages. All right, so the Holy Ghost, and the thing is, the Holy Ghost is not just, um, it, it's not, it's tongues, it's 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 um it's in he gives instruction uh uh it, the the you all I think we gave a list last week right mm -hmm. uh, of all the things and and no matter what you name there's stuff that you can't even think of because the Holy Ghost does so much for you mm -hmm. all right the Holy Ghost does so much for you um and so that's why it is important to um. Uh, to operate, the, the 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 Holy Ghost will give you discernment on when to do and when not to do. Okay, sometimes you notice in the in the in the service. All right, uh, uh, there's times where we we will move on uh, and go to the next things, and then there are times where the Holy Spirit say, "No, stay right here." You know, we we gonna move, or or I'll say, "No, you know what." We're going to pray right now. That's the Holy Spirit. Somebody get up, testify I was sick. No, we're going to pray right now or whatever. Just be led by the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 And so they were what? They were, they were, they were trained, commissioned. They waited to be filled with the Holy Ghost. They were led. They spread the gospel without a Bible. Amen. And so we thank God uh, for that. What did I say? And also... Also, Ephesians 4 and 11 says, and he gave some 
Somebody say some. some. And he gave some apostles and some prophets mm -hmm. and some evangelists and some pastors and some teachers, all right? Everybody is not going to be an evangelist, all right? Everybody's not going to be a pastor. Everybody's not going to be a prophet. And he gave some, all right? And so, uh, yes, he called everybody to witness, all right? But uh, uh, he's not going, he doesn't send everybody, if you will, to operate under the, the, the office of evangelist, all right? Because that, that's, that's, that's an office, okay? Um, so when we say that he called everybody to evangelism, we're using that, you know, by the definition of the word, okay? To basically to, to witness, we're all called to witness, all right? We are all, and, and one reason, don't you know that the Bible says, if you're free, Jesus said, if you're free to own me before men, he said, I'll be a, 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 a shame to own you before my father. That's right. If you're ashamed to own me before men, I'll be ashamed to own you before my father. And so what? If, if God is as good as you say he is, right? Because here's the thing about human nature. When we experience something, that's really good, we're going to tell somebody. Come on, talk to me, somebody. Whatever it is, if it's something you ate, if it's a vacation you took and went somewhere, if it's, if it's a TV show, if, if it's a movie, I don't care what it is. Human nature, if you experience something, amen, you really, really enjoy it, you're going to tell somebody about it. Now, if you say Jesus is the best thing that ever happened to me, but you don't never tell anybody, then what? Then your words don't line up with your actions. Amen, Amen Pastor. I won't turn back. <laughs> I tell them that every day. All right. I'm sold out. <laughs> That's my man. That's my boo. It's just all, it's all about him. Yes. That's exactly right. <laughs> you, you tell some. Body. Amen. Where we at? How much time we got? Because we got to get into, uh, all right, the next four or five paragraphs, we're dealing with um, John 4, 2 through 42, the woman at the well. Now, what you, what I need first lady to do, first lady, just read the next one. Believer must be filled. We're going to read that paragraph and we're going to jump to the story of the woman at the well. We're going to, we're not going to read every verse. We're going to just break it down a little outline. Read the, whole thing, right? the believer must be filled. Yes. The believer must be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit when he goes to evangelize. As holy men and women of God, we should be in the business of recruiting men and women to a lifetime of commitment to living for Christ. Uh -huh. Listen to this. The believer himself must be committed to Jesus and not to a certain church, lifestyle, or denomination. He must be willing to recruit all to the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Of course, the believer wants the recruit to follow him and become a part of his local church, but that's not how it always is. So remember, the first focus is to recruit him, recruit him to the body of Christ. The believer wants and needs to bring new believers to his church because only sheep beget sheep. Mm -hmm. He wants to be sure the new convert is recruited to a full gospel Bible teaching church. Remember, everyone who is recruited will not come to the church where you fellowship. However, encourage the continual fellowship with a doctrinally sound, solid Christian ministry and or church. All right. I, I read that a few times and I wanted to make sure that um, I was interpreting it, that paragraph correctly, um, trying to get into the minds of the the commentators who put this together. And, and I asked the Lord, Lord what, what exactly are they saying? And they did a good job pretty much of, of saying what they meant because it can throw you off if you just read the sentence that says, 
the believer himself must be committed to Jesus and not to a certain church. That could throw you off. So you have to read it in context and, and include the rest of the paragraph with that. Our belief, our responsibility when we witness and when we evangelize mm -hmm. is to bring souls to Christ. That that that's that's the whole that's the mission is to to witness and and win souls for Christ. Mm -hmm. Okay. Our job is not to win souls for our denomination. Our soul, our purpose is to win souls right. kingdom building. for Christ, for yes. the kingdom. That's when we get to heaven, when all believers get to heaven, right. we will not be divided by denomination. At all. There won't, won't exist. There won't be a section of town for Kojic. <laughs> there won't be a section of town for United Holiness. There won't be a section of town for AME. Baptist, no, all right? We're all believers. And that is the, should be the focus of when we witness to somebody, all right? Um, if that person accepts Christ, okay? Um, it would be great if they joined your church. It would be great if they join your denomination, mm -hmm. but that is not what's most important. Yeah. What's important is that a soul came to Christ. Yes. And then, um, as it said in the paragraph, you want to make sure you steer them, mm -hmm. all right, uh, somewhere where they're going, you, they, they can get the, the, the word of God taught to them uh, what we say, um, uh, the undivided uh, word. You, you, you understand? Well, somebody's going to rightly divide the word of God, okay? That's exactly right. Um, parents, grandparents, don't be disappointed if your child doesn't join your organization. Be glad that they said yes to the Lord. Amen. Amen. If you're Kojic and they join Assemblies of God, all right, be United Holiness, United Holiness <laughs> uh, just be glad, all right, that there's somewhere where they're uh, learning about Christ. And here's the thing about, uh, uh, about God. The Bible says when you hunger and you thirst for righteousness, you shall be filled. So if you're if if you have a burning desire to really know God and His Word, and you are somewhere where you're not being fed what you need to be fed, God will lead you to where you need to be. Amen. There are, there are people who have come from the east, west, north, and south. Uh, uh, the Lord led me here, such and such and such. Or I just needed more, whatever the case might be. God, it, so that's why that's why you can't frown on somebody, all right, who's not in the same denomination as you, all right. Uh, 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 somebody might be Catholic, all right. Okay, yeah, they teach different than we do, but God knows the heart of an individual. And if an individual is really seeking, amen, the fullness of God, God will deal with that person right where they are and lead them to where they need to be. And does it all the time. And does it all the time. That's exactly right. That's right. We got to witness everywhere. 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 That's exactly right. We have to, we, 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 we need to get up off that stigma. Uh, 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 I ain't going to say it. Woo, I ain't gonna say it because I don't want to offend nobody, but God has believers everywhere. Mm -hmm. Everywhere. So glad. And, and 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 every and listen. No, we ain't going there neither. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway, I just wanted to make sure that you you got the gist of that uh that paragraph mm -hmm. is that we just need to make sure that we're evangelizing. 
Okay, now I'm gonna have to take five minutes and I'm gonna have to run, I'm gonna take seven minutes and I'm gonna run through this really quickly. Uh, following your Bibles or, or wherever John 4, 2 through 42 is Jesus evangelizing. Okay, this is when he met the woman at the well. There was just some points that I want to bring out, all right, to help you, help us when we evangelize, when we witness, okay? Uh, one, uh, number one, he went out of his way. Would he tell the disciples, I must needs go through Samaria? He went out of his way because that wasn't the normal route in which the Jews took when they traveled, okay? Meaning sometimes you have to go out of your way all right, to uh, to witness, to evangelize, okay? You might have to get out of your car uh, in the cold. Uh, you, you, you might have to get out of your car when it's drizzling. Um, you might have to go where, wherever, uh, uh, all right, to to um, to witness, to evangelize. You gotta go out, out of your way because God has um, people that need to hear the word. And guess what? They might not be in your route. Sometimes God will change your route on purpose. It was a mistake to you, but he did it on, it was his divine will that you went here instead of there, that you took this route instead of that route, that you went to shop right instead of stopping shop, all right? He, he orchestrated it, amen. Um, uh, so one, he went out of his way, okay? Because why all souls matter. Two, he struck up a conversation. All right, we saw it coming with 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 the bucket. All right, I, I mean, yeah, I mean, listen, if 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 he was really really thirsty, he could have just told the water to jump up out the well. You you, you, you understand what I'm saying? He, but he he struck a conversation up, and sometimes that's the best way to witness. Is it, it's just small talk. You, you understand what I'm saying? You could. My father was the master of that. Yes. My father can go from talking about the Super Bowl to talking about Re Book of Revelation. <laughs> I mean, and that's just how it was. I mean, it didn't matter. What? Yeah, yeah. Hey, you see the game last night? Yeah, man. Jesus saves. I mean, he, he, just, <laughs> he just knew how to, you know, small talk. All right, and and so sometimes you just need to. Um, um, use that um, as a, um, a, a diving board, just, just small talk, you know. And um, uh, three, uh, he began to talk about himself and what he could do for her, all right? Because um, first thing, because she said, well, who are you a Jew to be asking me a Samaritan for water, right. all right? Jesus just ignored that, that, that response and he what he, he just continued on he was like listen if you knew who it was that was asking you for water you would be asking him if you understand he kept it about himself and when we witness we are supposed to keep it about jesus christ that's who we are witnessing about that is the focal point we want to stay on that all right and talk there's a whole lot you can say about jesus christ Okay, so um, four, listen, he never knocked her religious practices. He politely let her know that she needed more knowledge and understanding. She said, what did she say? She said, well, our fathers worship in these mountains, but you know, you all say that we should worship in Jerusalem. And Jesus just simply said, well, listen, there's going to come a time where we neither worship in the mountains nor uh, in Jerusalem. And, he, you know, he said the Jews, you know, he said, uh, we have understanding of worship, you know, uh, you, you all worship, but you don't have understanding. Okay, when you go back in your, in your reading, you'll see where he said that. All right. Basically, he just said, you, you, you know, it's good that you go to church or it's good such and such and such but you need some more understanding. You, 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 you follow what I'm saying? See, and there's some people who, who they not far off. They, they just need a little more understanding. You know, they, they heard grandmama say something or, you know, they, they remember Sunday school when they was 10 years old or, or, or whatever the case might be. They may have never gone to church, but you, but you'd be surprised. Some people just, 
just need a little more understanding. And that's where you come in. And that's why every believer needs to know what? The playbook, right? Then remember how many times have I said that it, it's not just the quarterback. Right. I mean, it's not, yeah, the whole team should know the plays, mm -hmm. all right? It's not just the pastor's job to know the playbook. Every member, amen, should, you don't have to know the whole book. Amen. But when you're talking about salvation, yes. when you're talking about Jesus Christ and what he did for us, you should be able to explain at least that. Mm -hmm. Amen. Jesus is the Christ. Of the, you can't even be saved unless you believe that. Jesus yes. is the Christ, the son of the living God. Yes. Yeah. He, he uh, uh, Just start singing that song, Kenny and him saying, live and he loved me. Yes. Died and he yes. saved me. Come on now. just you, you follow me. That's the gospel. Mm -hmm. That song is the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so some people just need um, a little more understanding, okay? And 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 as the Holy Spirit, Lee, he ain't gonna give you all everything. Don't hold somebody hostage for forty five minutes in an hour witnessing. That, no, no, you're no, you 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 drop a seed. You understand? You you when you water, you don't stand there in that one spot with the holes and and what you gonna do? You are gonna make mud? You, you understand <laughs> what I'm saying? No, you got listen. You you spend a little time here, then you move on. You, you follow me? Don't bend somebody's ear that that long. No, you let the Holy Ghost give you what to say. Drop a seed. Mm -hmm. Amen. There's some folks that's homeless. Well, you, you know what? My church is in Hillside. So you need a ride, whatever the case might be. All, all right. Uh, um, but um, don't, what did I say? Jesus did not, um, he did not bash her religious practices. Just so you don't bash a person. All right. If they say, well, I'm Muslim or I'm this, or I'll go to church or whatever. You don't bash anybody. Um, you don't, what did I say? Number five. And I'm ending with number five. Jesus called, Jesus called out her sin only to display his spiritual discernment. She followed up by saying, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Don't try to make someone feel bad about their sin lifestyle, or just the fact that they don't know Christ. That's not why you're there. You're not there to make somebody feel bad, all right? Jesus only called her business out. He put it in the street. First of all, he didn't put it in the street because he sent the disciples off to, to, to shop right. So they weren't even there when he was witnessing. So he didn't even put it in the street. He just called it out so she could see, oh, he must be a prophet, man. He don't know me from Adam, but yet he knew all my business. See, that it, it was that had divine purpose. But when you witness to somebody, it, it, your 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 purpose is not to try to make them feel bad. It, it, it's to just tell them about a God that 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 saves anybody, that loves everybody, and also you tell them what He did for you. Yes. That's that's what you tell us. Be like, yeah, and and then you know, listen, you 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 start maybe God to give you to share something about yourself. They be like, no, really, you? Yes, yes. I, man, I was right where you were ten years ago, twenty years ago. I, I was right out here in these streets, or whatever the case might be. Let the Lord lead you, all right, on what to wow. say. But we don't bash people. Amen for for their their sin or whatever because you can turn them off and they'll never want to know uh, who Jesus is. Amen. So we 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 want to uh, we want to be uh, upbeat, positive. All right. We we want to let a light shine. All right. And so they will uh, 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 what have an ear to hear what we are telling them. Are there any are there any um, questions or comments? All right. Later on, when we're done, read conclusion. We're not going to do that. Uh, we just want to know if anybody have a question, if anybody has a comment about this uh, evangelism. You need to know what your responsibility is. We are to tell somebody about Christ. The Bible says he's never left himself without a witness. Never. He's going to have a witness. Somebody is going to tell somebody how good he is. What did he say? Amen. If, if if the he he told them uh when they were yelling Hosanna in the highest, 
And those Pharisees were like, please tell them to stop saying that. He said, if I make them be quiet, he said, the rock's going to cry out. They mad. And so he will have somebody witnessing, telling them just who he is. Amen. Nobody, 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 nobody. I'm looking. Nobody's unmuting. All right. I guess we did all right tonight. Nobody has any questions or comments. Um, First Lady? Yes. You want to close this out and then I guess we can uh, uh, make sure you vote. Please don't put your ballots in the mail now. Go and drop it off. In the ballot box. Don't, don't, please do not. No post office. Go straight to the ballot box. Go put it in somebody's hand. Don't trust the mail, the postal system this late in the game. Okay. Uh, hopefully, most of you all, under the sound of my voice, voted already. And uh, you won't have to stand in those long lines. Mm -hmm. um, what else do we have, First Lady? Um, I believe that's, that's it, Pastor. All right. I haven't heard from Deacon Jackson. I reached out to him earlier today um, about his test, but we're yet trusting and believing God. Mm -hmm. We're yet praying. I told you, Mother Christmas, Mother Mother Dent, and, and we always pray for our mothers anyway, yes. but... Come on. Sister Bobby McGee. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Mother Sanders. Always. Mm -hmm. uh, all the mothers. All of yeah. the mothers. Let me, let me just say this. Please, please, and pass this along. If you are going in for a procedure, mm -hmm. please let me or First Lady know. Please. Like you say, you might say, well, it was just a simple procedure. I don't think there's any such thing as Especially a simple when you procedure. Go anesthesia. Yeah, things can go wrong. We pray that they don't, but you want somebody to pray, pray for yes. you when you have these procedures. You don't even have to tell me what it is. I'm not a nosy person. If you just say, Pastor, pray for me, I'm going to just pray for you. You follow what I'm saying? But if you're going to have a procedure, please don't go in the hospital and come out and I didn't know it. Please just let us know. All right. So we can pray for you. Amen. God bless you. First lady, you can dismiss us. And then we'll say after the benediction, we'll say goodbye to live. And then First Church can stay on. Yeah, Father, in Jesus' name, God, we thank you, oh God, for this another opportunity to go deeper into your word. Lord, we thank you for our teacher on tonight, our pastor, God. We ask that you continue to bless and strengthen him. Lord, we thank you for each and every family that's represented on tonight. God, continue to bless us one by one and name by name. Until we shall meet again, God, continue to bless us and keep us is our prayer in Jesus' name. And we thank you for the spirit of evangelism, God. We will be on our post and do as you have commissioned us to do in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank Amen. you. Thank you for all of you all who joined us, Facebook Live. Thank you. And, uh, and God bless you. All right.